Hello, this is Hands-On DevOps with Ansible. This is Section 5, Automating Kubernetes Deployment with Ansible. In this section, we'll look at connecting Ansible to Kubernetes. We'll talk about how Kubernetes deployments work. We'll show an example of integration testing with Kubernetes and Ansible. We'll show how to use Ansible to deploy an application to Kubernetes. And we'll talk about how, with Ansible, we can easily do a Kubernetes rolling update so that we can update our application without any downtime. Connecting Ansible to Kubernetes. In this video, we'll talk about the K8S raw module, and we'll talk about Kubernetes client configuration so that Ansible will be able to connect to our Kubernetes cluster. So far, we've talked about building up our application for a virtual environment. We talked about building up virtual machine images, deploying those to Amazon Web Services. We talked about virtual machine testing with Vagrant and Jenkins. Then we switched over to containerization, and we talked about using Docker from Ansible, directly starting containers on the Docker engine using Docker Compose. Now we want to look at moving a level up in terms of abstraction. We want to talk about a container orchestration environment. So under the covers, we'll still be running Docker containers. So all the things that we did to build up our Docker containers and push them to registries, that all still is relevant. But we're asking Kubernetes to start those Docker containers for us. And that way, Kubernetes can monitor those Docker containers. It can create multiple replicas for us. It can do rolling updates. Uh, there's a number of features that we get by using a container orchestration environment like Kubernetes. Now Ansible is designed to work with Kubernetes via the K8S raw module. Um, it's kind of an odd name. There is still in Ansible a module called Kubernetes, but that module became deprecated. And so it was replaced, you know, the way that it talked to Kubernetes was not easily uh, maintainable as the API changed. So uh, they put in place this K8S raw module instead. That's the one that we want to use. The other one is deprecated. It's going away in Ansible 2.9 and uh, this will be the only way to do it. Let's go ahead and take a look at what that K8S raw module looks like. So here is an example. You can see that, you know, we just use it like any other module. We start with some kind of state information. This can be either present or absent, and then it will actually either add to or it'll make sure that that particular resource is there in the container orchestration environment inside of Kubernetes, or if we say absent, it'll make sure that it's removed. One important thing when we're talking to a Kubernetes cluster is how we authenticate to it. The API that we talk to is authenticated. There's a couple ways to do that. One is to use an API key, which is like a token. We log in and it gives us that token and then we can use it either this API key form. We can just use this as another attribute. We just specify the key. Or we can ask it to look in this K8S auth API key environment variable. It'll do that if it doesn't see any other authentication information. Now, if we don't want to use an API key, another way to do it is to use a client certificate file. So we can tell the Kubernetes cluster that we trust this particular client certificate. We can then offer that client certificate when we connect to the API, and that will be how we authenticate ourselves. And we do that using cert file, or we can use this K8S auth cert file environment variable. Now, the reason that you don't see either of these things, and we don't use either of these environment variables, is that there is a third option. We can actually just use the standard .kube slash config file in our home directory, and the underlying module will go and look there for authentication. So that's what we're actually doing in this case. So now that we've done that, what you can see, if you've got some familiarity with Kubernetes, everything inside this definition block should look very familiar. This is the exact same kind of thing we would put in a Kubernetes YAML file. Uh, what we can do is we can either do it in line with this definition, or what we'll see a little bit later on is that we can do it in a separate file using this source attribute. Inside this definition, we can use all the same kinds of things that we're used to for Kubernetes. One thing that you have to watch out for is that the version of the K8S raw module that you're using um, is tied to the version of the underlying, it's actually an OpenShift API Python module that we have to install in order to get this to work. And that OpenShift Python module installs a particular version of the underlying Kubernetes Python module. 
And based on the version of those two Python modules, the OpenShift and the Kubernetes one, that's going to determine exactly what version of the API we're using. So I'll give you an example. In this particular scenario, I'm actually running Kubernetes 1.11, but the Python modules that I'm using are based on the 1.10 API. So when I add things to my Ansible file, I have to make sure that I write to the 1.10 API, which changes things up a little bit in terms of uh, some of the API versions that I use in these kinds of attributes so that I can make sure it works correctly with the Python module so that it knows how to talk to Kubernetes. So that's an important thing that we have to watch out for. With this definition, we've got in place in our playbook, what we can then do is we can switch over to our terminal environment. I already have a Kubernetes cluster running. I'm actually using Minikube, which is a single node Kubernetes cluster that's very easy to get up and running. It runs inside a virtual machine. And it's nice for these kind of test and uh, demonstration scenarios. Definitely use it for development uh, whenever I have that kind of development to do. So with the Minikube, if I go and I look at that configuration file I talked about, you can see the way that the configuration works. So here you have an example of the client certificate and the client key that I talked about. You can see how those are configured to files in my home directory. And so that's the way that the Ansible module will know to authenticate itself when it talks to Kubernetes is by reading this configuration file. So with that out of the way, let's go ahead and we'll run our playbook. The first thing this will do is it will kick off a rebuild of our Docker image using the Docker image module that we saw in the last section. But in this case, there won't be uh, too much in terms of changes because we've recently built that, so that'll go by very fast. You'll then see it go to create a persistent storage volume, which already exists. We'll talk about what that does in our next video. You see it then go out and create the services. It creates the database deployment and the application deployment. And again, we'll cover in detail exactly what each one of these does. But at the end of the day, the most important thing that results is that it runs what Kubernetes calls pods, which essentially is a wrapper for one or more Docker containers. So we have Docker containers running now, you see them running here, that reflect the application that we've deployed. So what we've been able to do using that K8S raw Ansible module is we've been able to take our containerized application along with a Postgres database, we've deployed it to Kubernetes. So now those Docker containers are running in Kubernetes, they're set up to uh, work so that one can talk to the other, so that the application can talk to the database. And Kubernetes will monitor those so that if anything happens and one of these containers were to fail, it would start another version. You'll notice that there are three copies of the to-do pod. We can actually control things like replicas, so we can do scaling. So there's a lot of features that make Kubernetes a really nice environment to deploy to. And of course, with Ansible, that deployment is very easy to do, and we'll see how we can use it for things like rolling updates in a very simple and easy way. So that completes our look at Ansible connecting to Kubernetes and the K8S raw module.